a lock, a door, motion sensing lights, a tack dog, a seatbelt, airbags, alarm system. These are things we interact with every single day. On your way out of the house tonight, you locked the door, you didn't think about it. Not really in recent time has anyone asked, why do I have to lock my doors at night? It's pretty automatic, right? I'm an IT consultant right here in Connecticut, and I do a fair amount in the cybersecurity space. One of my goals is making technology and cybersecurity in particular a little more relatable to people. Here's an example. This is how people tend to feel about cybersecurity before they've been hacked. Sidewalk. You walk down this sidewalk every day. It's the most beautiful sidewalk in the world, right? I'm going to stop you one day and say, hey, um, to continue walking down this sidewalk safely, I'm going to have to collect a small tax to protect you. There's some bad guys out there. You'd be like, well, Matt, I don't see these bad guys. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. That's how people tend to feel until they've been hacked, right? When they have been hacked, then they feel like they've been robbed. And you know what? Oftentimes, they have been. Individuals and organizations are the targets of hundreds or thousands of cyber attacks every single day. Now, if you knew that hundreds or thousands of people were going to come break into your house or break into your office, would you leave your doors unlocked, unalarmed, or unprotected? Probably not. So that's hundreds or thousands of attacks per day. Now, many of these are automated. They scan the internet looking for vulnerabilities or weaknesses in computer systems. And some throw out just some kind of bait hoping someone will click on it. You don't get to just block the big one and move on. That's not how this works. Everyone's under attack at all times. But what I see is the vast majority of, of people and organizations just don't take enough proactive measures to defend themselves. It's kind of like they wait until they've been robbed, or wait until they've been broken into, to get that lock, to get that alarm. Imagine if we change the way we think about cybersecurity. What if we all integrate it into the fabric of our daily lives, creating stronger and safer relationships with technology, allowing us to enjoy the rich, interconnected world we live in today? Now, this may sound daunting, and it definitely can be complex, but like anything else, one foot in front of the other. Now, if your kids take some kind of self-defense course like karate, maybe you've seen the transformative power of channeling fear in constructive and positive ways. If you haven't, maybe give it a try. Nothing tends to build self-confidence like self-defense, just like cybersecurity, right? And you don't start as a black belt either. You just start somewhere. You see, there's no reason to be afraid, and there's no reason that you or we should accept the current state just as is. I'm going to get hacked. Who cares? That's not good enough. The more steps you take, the more confident you'll feel, and the less afraid you'll be. And here's some really good news. We're developing machines, computers, that can attack other computers and do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So pictured on the screen here on the left is uh, an early... Electromechan electromechanical computer of sorts, right? When we talk about machines defeating machines, in World War II, the Germans were exchanging messages using a device called an Enigma machine. So what this did was it scrambled messages, and cryptographers either couldn't or had a very difficult time unscrambling those messages. So Alan Turing and his group of women and men developed this machine, kind of an early computer of sorts to crack those codes. So it's a machine to defeat the machine. That's what's exciting right now, is we're developing machines to defeat machines. But until the systems are smart enough and fast enough, we have the old anti-malware, the website's blocked, the annoying pop-ups. Yeah, it stinks. We got it. But just know that systems are getting faster, smarter all the time. In fact, one of the interesting things uh, to me is let's say there's a file transferred in an office every single day. It's a payroll file, has all kinds of good stuff in it, like checking account numbers and you know, all kinds of identifiable information. Let's say that file is transmitted on the company's network right, every day at 10 o'clock in the morning. What happens if that same file is transmitted at 10 o'clock at night? You think someone should know about that? What if it's transmitted outside of the company? 
people should know about these things. So what I'm saying is computer systems are getting smart at identifying unusual behavior like this, and they're going to do a lot of that work for us. Cybersecurity is much more abstract compared to that lock or that door, right? You can touch the lock. You can touch the door. And I mean, compared to the invention of a door or a lock, it's brand new. But I think we've gotten to a point where we all can wrap our heads around cybersecurity, understand why it's important, and really make it part of our daily routine. And we just have to. There's one thing that all these systems, I, other consultants, cannot do for you, though, and that's care. You have to care. We all have to care. We have to care that this is important enough, it's important enough to protect our information, our identities, that we do something about it. So if you take one thing away from this, it's go home caring that cybersecurity is important and there's something you can do about it. Did you know that over 90% of cyber attacks start with a phishing email? So that's a scam designed to trick you into doing something. So something you can do is develop a habit for identifying unusual emails. Because hackers today aren't just tech geeks, they're con artists, right? This may make you feel a little less important and maybe a little insignificant in the world, but Microsoft will not single you out and call you to solicit technical support. That's a scam. <laughs> and I think we're all on to the foreign prince who needs help bringing his fortune to the United States, right? <laughs> we got that. We're good. <laughs> but you know what they are doing? They're mining sites like Instagram, like Facebook, like your company's corporate website to learn everything they can about you and the people around you. They take that information and they craft very, very, very good emails tricking you into doing something. These emails maybe come from your boss, maybe your brother, your sister, someone you know, maybe HR. Maybe they come from a hotel chain. <laughs> they might ask you to update your personal information, transfer money, change an account number, maybe go out and buy gift cards, right? Maybe it's from HR, Company, uh, a file goes out, it's payroll.xls. It's very enticing for a lot of people to open. In my simulated testing, where we simulate a phishing attack on organizations, the first test that we do, it is not uncommon to see 50% of people in an organization fail that first test, with a large percentage of those people actually giving up information, like their username. You see, hackers understand that the weakest link in all of this is us right now. They understand that people are vulnerable to this. They know that we want to help each other and do good. And if you, know, if you want to update my information, OK, I'll go update it. Combine that with these emails being really indistinguishable from real emails. I'll tell you, though, there's something that you can look out for in these in particular. Be on the lookout for something that either asks for something or provide something a little unusual. So to this human problem, though, the good news is there's a human solution. If you get an email that asks you to do something, and you're not really sure, there's this old device that nobody uses anymore. It's called a telephone. You can call people and ask, did you mean to send this? You know. But don't call the phone number that's in the email, because that's part of the scam, too. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> For so many people, there's a sense of powerlessness around cybersecurity and kind of the way things are today. But I want you to know, no matter what your technical level is, there's no attack that you or we can't have a standing chance of defending ourselves against. If we care enough, if we care enough to harden our systems, have good policies, and question anything out of the ordinary. The good news is that systems today are getting better, faster, smarter at identifying and blocking unusual behavior and real-time threats. We can even do things like sandbox and test attachments, launch them in simulated environments before they even get to your inbox. It's pretty cool. This is really, really cool stuff that's on the, on the horizon. But just like there was a time when doors weren't locked and People didn't feel like they needed to lock their doors that night. There's a time now, and hopefully we'll you know, wind down in the future, where uh, computer systems aren't protected. 
I think we all agree now that the risk is just too great. In the next five to 10 years, I think you'll really see organizations required to protect data in different ways. We already see this with manufacturers that do business with the federal government in something called NIST compliance. And I think we've all experienced HIPAA compliance and the different HIPAA forms that you might have to fill out at the doctor's office. That leads right into cybersecurity as well. The technology is here that makes it fast and smart so we can make this part of our routine, just like locking that door on our way out of the house. But I just want to be clear. I get it. It is really hard to care. It's hard to care about anything preventative. Never mind something that's abstract and pretty invisible, right? You can't touch cybersecurity. But this is the same problem in medicine in a whole slew of fields. It might help to think of your data as what it is, though. Consider your data your property, just like your home or office, and it must be defended. Thank you. <laughs>